For the little bit of the rub, nigga, I gotta be safe. Let's get to the sports talk. Is leaving the Cleveland Cavaliers as head coach. They're promoting associate head coach JB Bickerstaff to become the full time head coach. Remember, Beeline was really successful at Michigan, left there to come to the Cavs, and he's been there now, you know, less than one full season. Here's what Cleveland guard Colin Sexton had to say about Beeline quote, You know how he is. He's very detail oriented. Detail, detail, detail. Loves detail. And he always wants us to make sure that when we're out there, we're giving it our all. College coaches, you know how they are. They want you to go a thousand percent every second of the day. He's been in college for 20 years, more than that. We've had to tell him, coach, we've got 82 games. We can't kill ourselves. Now, John Bielan is by no means the first college coach to go to the pros and not find great success. It has been tricky in the past. Jerry Tarkanian, one of the all-time legends at UNLV, went to the San Antonio Spurs, lasted just 20 games in the NBA. Before his stints with Kentucky and Memphis, John Calipari was the head coach of the then New Jersey Nets. He won fewer than 40% of his games. Was fired in 1998 when he started 3-17. and 17. Rick Pitino was the head coach of the Knicks and Celtics. Had some success in New York, not a lot in Boston. Ultimately finished with a sub-500 overall record in the NBA. And this is a guy who was in the Hall of Fame. So the I notion, think it's interesting when the second year player can say that about a head coach. Colin Sexton, but I mean, second you know, year guy. That's by fascinating. the standards of that team, yeah. he's sort of a veteran. That's a whole other set sure. of problems. But, but let's start with you as the basketball guy at the table, Jay Will. Is, does this mean that... I get it, that he was in college mode. But that mode right there is, he want to see this team make it to the playoffs. See this team willing to put some effort to win. There are more signs right there of they don't want to win like that. If you want to win, it don't matter what that coach does, how his coaching style is, you want to win. But it shows you the different mass that certain players have. That's what happens when you have leaders on your team that's willing to put up with that and willing to want to win. And that's why you see the inconsistent with this team. He got put into a situation that he know he wasn't going to last coaching the Cavaliers. The notion that lifer college coaches, guys who are accustomed to that, having the kind of control that you have in college, you don't have in the, in the NBA or the NFL, that that just isn't going to work. Uh, I think for some guys, I mean, Brad Stevens got inserted into a really good situation. Billy Donovan had Russell Westbrook, obviously, with OKC. I, I think this position means a lot here, guys. And you see, you see, it's all about the situation that you get put in. Brad Stevens got put into a situation that was a success on his way. And you see how his team is, the bigger difference. His players want to win. Billy Dolman, he got put into a good situation. And look at the success he had with OKC. It's just all about the situation that you get put in. And you get into a situation where you had to coach the Cavaliers. You got to try to figure out a way to get someone to be hungry to win. But he got to put into a situation that you know... You got to look over your shoulder because you don't know you go last for a year. Look what happened. Some coaches micromanage at the collegiate level because you have to, and some other coaches have the disposition of being a little bit more laid back. A laid back approach, I would say a guy like Bill Self. I can see Bill Self being an NBA coach because he doesn't micromanage every situation of the day that these guys go through, and that, I think that's the major difference here. So much of it in the NFL and the NBA, it's, it's a player-driven league. And whether you like it or not, the talent of the players and players' comfort to a certain point matters. And so, you know, riding to the game, making sure you're getting your mind right. Guys want to get there at different times. All those kinds of things. We always talk about the devil and the details, but I think it's when you cross the lines, right? Get on the field, get on the court. That's when the details, but all the other, all the extra that coaches try to push on guys, that's got to be intrinsic. Guys got to want that. Exactly. And when you have players do that, that's where your leadership. See, you got to have somebody that's who want that, who want that hunger, who want to be successful, who want to get their team to the playoffs and try to go deep in the playoffs. 
You got to have somebody that's hungry enough to want to win. You can't get into a situation where you see players that's effortless. That's where Tom Brady separates himself. Peyton Manning, Drew Brees. It's not just how good they it's It's the leadership they have that everybody else around goes, man, I want to be like that. It's not the coach you go, I want to be like him. You yeah. want to be like the guys who drive you from a player perspective. A couple of years ago, I had the privilege of doing David Blatt's contract. He was a play, uh, coach that won multiple championships over in Europe, and we did the deal where he went to Cleveland. And ironically, he had success early, went to the finals that first year. But he always talked about the coachability of the NBA player and mm -hmm. his approach had to be markedly different and obviously it didn't yes. end well there and he was frustrated from a standpoint that the European player was more in his mind moldable than an NBA player. Because well, in NBA you got guys who are making 15, 20 million dollars a year and as a head coach John Beeline was making four. Uh, I will say this, I just don't, I don't feel as bad for John Beeline because now all of a sudden he's elevated himself. He's already being in the midst of conversations about is he going to be the next head coach of IU if what happens to Archie Miller, is he going to be the next head coach of Texas if Shaka Smart doesn't exist. So I do feel like coaches can do this if they can go up. They're always going to come back. That's right. They can read more The thing is, exactly. understand in college, being a head coach is a dictatorship. You tell the players what to do. You're essentially herding sheep, specifically in football, teams of 88. That's right. In the NFL, it's a democracy. The players are making more than the coach. You're not telling a grown man how to tie his shoes and what color socks to wear. It won't last long. Mm. The, the thing about Beeline that stuns me, and again, I, I know him, I like him, and I... That's what happened. When you don't have no leaders on your team... And you got a young team that you inherit, it's gonna be a lot different and a lot of difficulty. Because you gotta find that leader on your team. Yeah, they have Kevin Love. Yeah, they had Trisha Thompson. Yeah, they had them type veterans, but it's their leader. You need some leaders on your team to be able to be able to get this team to listen. And lead them in the right direction. But when you inherit a young team, it's a lot different. Expect him. But it was so easy to see this not working. Like, right, when it, I remember sitting here the day that story broke. Woj broke it on our show. I remember we were having the conversation. Is that a joke? Like, is that really going to happen mm. at this stage of his life? He's going to try the NBA for the first time. Sometimes when the obvious problem becomes the problem, it's the person who made the decision. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. The best stuff in the shits in the safe. Got me a spot out the way. Nigga just trying to be safe.